In this podcast, we react to Borough's win against Spurs, give our praise and place nominations, and we answer your podcast questions. This is the Borough Breakdown Podcast, and this is our Borough Mash Day Chatter in a pod. One support. Curtis Fleming is there on the edge of the air. Fleming for What's Craig it? Hignett. Hit it, Higgy. Higgy hits the track. Abanelli coming alive again. Janino wants the ball played to him. Abanelli spots out. Hello and welcome to the Bora Breakdown Podcast with Johnny Dana and Tom. We are the Bora Podcast that gives you all of your Bora Match Day chatter in a podcast. And on Tuesday, the 1st of March, Bora beat Premier League side Tottenham Hotspur at the Riverside Stadium by one goal to nil in extra time. Josh Corbin fired home an absolute rocket from about seven yards uh, to see Bora go through to the FA Cup quarterfinals for the first time in five years. Uh, guys, what a night. Nice, what a night. Nice, um, describe how you're feeling in as many words as you possibly can. Dana, do you want to go first? You know what? I didn't think that beating Man United on penalties at Old Trafford again could be eclipsed, but it was yesterday. Oh, my God. Just wow. Honestly, everybody on that pitch in a Borough shirt yesterday made everybody in that stadium so incredibly proud to a man from Joe Lumley to Sol Bamba everybody in between they were superb forget the national narrative about Tottenham and their problems and Spursy and Conte without a trophy and Spurs have gone without a trophy since 2008 forget about that it was all about Borough last night we were so good the atmosphere was fantastic it was just one of those nights that make you so happy to be involved in this sport as a fan um, and it's one that honestly, it's a night that I'm never going to forget for the rest of my life. Again, another one they've served us up, another one. Shrove Tuesday as well. Yeah, they definitely dished us up a treat. Very good play on words. And I'd also like to give a shout out to former board boss Jonathan Woodgate for letting Spurs fans know that he won them the trophy in 2008 <laughs> and never shut up about it all night. He good, was so good. boring yesterday, by the way, on the coverage. Good I, I was housery. So good. boring on the coverage. Oh yeah, yeah. But I, I still can't unhear options dawn though. Yeah, I feel like you just you should have said options dawn just to make me feel a little bit happier uh, <laughs> about it. But uh, Tom, echo. I'm assuming you're going to echo uh, Dana's thoughts. Uh, what a night! Yeah, I mean, I don't think there's any way of following that really. I think Dana's just summed it up really well. Um, yeah, just absolutely buzzing about it. Uh, going into it. Yeah, we, we got a message on Telegram yesterday to to me and Dana pretty much saying, oh, wait, what, what are you doing on the last podcast? Where's your FA Cup <laughs> spirit and stuff like that? And I was like, yeah, I mean, you know, it, it's not a competition. We, I, I thought we had a realistic chance of winning or anything like that. So it kind of, it is what it is. And then we'd go for a lack game last night and just come out thinking, all right, are, are we not going out next then? Because we're winning this. this year. <laughs> um, yeah, oh, unbelievable, really. The atmosphere was absolutely so, superb. And just the way we played against that that, that team, like like Dennis said, like forget about the, the narrative about it. That is still a quality team. Uh, and, and we... You know, we did so well against them and, and deserved the win. You know, going into extra, going into extra time, I just thought, you know what, with the chances we've had, it'd be typical that this goes to penalties and we lose. And then, you know, we, we deserve the win, and 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 we we end up getting that goal, and just the the atmosphere afterwards, superb. Still not come down yet. I, you know what? I feel hungover, and I haven't. I didn't have a drop of alcohol yesterday, but I feel hungover on the emotion of the game because when Corbin scored, I think I just lost. I lost all composure, and every every possible emotion just was released. It was like therapy. It was just honestly, I can't even put it into it. There's a random child next to me that was just going <laughs> off it, and I'm just going off it with this random child, like celebrating with him. Brilliant. Priceless. Yeah, I think it was a really, really good result last night, wasn't it? And I think I'd just like to say that I'm, I'm so glad I told you that we were going to win and you shot me down. But um, yeah, it went, <laughs> to, to be fair, when we were coming away from Barnsley, um, it was kind of, if you told me we were going to beat Spurs in, in the week, I was going to, I was going to be so surprised. Um, it's two positive results I didn't expect this week and obviously one being the Rona. So um, it's, 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 <laughs> it's, uh, it was, 
it was honestly fantastic for Borough. You know, obviously you guys were there. I was watching it at home, and it's just I think from from watching it there and, and watching the performance we put in, and it was just fantastic. Honestly, every single player yesterday was was brilliant, and you know, it can't fault any of them. And it's just like you can say, I know you were saying at the start, Dana. Every single obviously the the narrative on TV was Spurs. This, you know, they're faltering, but. Borough were by far the better team on the night. They played the absolute socks off. And you know what? You could probably argue that Spurs were the championship side and we were the Premier League team at times because we were really, really good. And we'll dissect the game now then because Borough did make one change to the side that lost to Barnsley on, on the Saturday with uh, Matt Crooks returning to the lineup in place of James Leah Saliki. And Johnny Housen went back into that defensive midfielder role, which we know is his best position. But Dana, what made the performance so good? We were just so on it, <laughs> generally speaking. I think Spurs just couldn't handle the battle and the fight of Borough. And you mentioned House in there. Within probably a minute of the game, he was snapping at the heels of Harry Kane and he did not let them rest. That did not stop since that the, the first moment that he did that. And it was relentless from House. And I think quite possibly the best midfield performance or the best Borough performance I've seen for a long time um and i was kind of thinking is it a 10 out of 10 performance i would probably say it was i mean i know there was the header that he missed it was a it was a big chance but to hell with that it was a 10 out of 10 performance from house and he was brilliant so he was key to that i think the drive and the energy from midfield the just the 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 energy and the relentlessness the pressing honestly and i said that after the barzy game that the defensive three of McNair, Dyke Steele and Fry, that was the worst I've seen them. I tell you what, it was the best I'd seen them against Spurs. They were superb to a man. Everyone knew what they were doing. Everyone knew who, the, who they were supposed to be marking. It was honestly, tactically, it was brilliant from Borough. Mm. Tom, what, what, what made the, the, the performance so good for you? I, I, I think Dennis just summed it up again there. Just... I think the the absolute drive from all the players to win that. It, in terms of the motivation, it was the complete opposite of Barnsley at the weekend. You know, I mean, Dale Fry now has Harry Kane and Ronaldo in his pocket from from this cup run, which you know <laughs> didn't expect kind of going in, <laughs> into this season at all uh, to to be saying. And you know, the the midfield absolutely quality yesterday. You know, seventy-one percent of the earth's covered by water. The rest covered by Johnny House. And after that performance, he was just absolutely <laughs> everywhere. Um, yeah, I, I just I can't put it in into words. Like, yeah, how, how good we were. Um, just I totally didn't expect it against Spurs going into last mm-hmm. night after the you know the shootout win against Man United. I had a similar sort of feeling to. I, can't, I mean, I've I've given this example a couple of times today. I still don't know which season it was, but it was either when we knocked out City or we knocked out United. But we played Everton in the next round uh, at the Riverside. Delafeo had the game of his life, and you know, yeah, I remember that. Two nil. I, I just I, I I kind of expected something like that, and then it was just to come out. It was just the absolute opposite of of what I expected to see. Um. And, and I mean, just the opposite of a few days ago as well. Um, just like, like I say, in, in terms of a mindset and a mentality, everyone just seemed up for it last night. And when we play as, as well as we know we can do, we're going to get results like that. Mm. So, like, how based on that, then, Tom, how how were Borough able to like dominate last night? You know, fifty one percent possession, which shows that we had a bit more of the balance of the ball. But there was something a little bit more to the game, wasn't it? That really just stopped Spurs in, in the tracks, didn't it? Yeah, I mean. Like I said, I think it does come down to mentality, but there was something we were doing last night which we weren't doing against Barnsley, which uh, Wilder actually highlighted in his post-match press conference against Barnsley, that the defensive three weren't pushing up against Barnsley. And then I think it helped that we had Crooks back as well because he was able to hold it up in midfield a little bit more. But every time we were getting into that midfield area about, about kind of 40, 35 yards out from their goal, you could see the defence moving forward and we were just pinning Spurs in. So when they were getting the ball, they weren't able to even counter-attack. I mean, Kane's not the quickest, is he? And then, you know, we've got... I think Son was the the only threat from from that counter-attack. Maybe... Um, I'm going to butcher his name, Abel Kulevsky. Uh, um, I, I, thought, I thought he was dangerous as well. Um, but kind of in, in terms of a you know fast kind of focal point in the attack, they didn't really have that with Kane. He was... 
he was sat around the centre circle for, for most of the game. I mean, fair enough, his link-up play was as good as you could expect from him, but um, I, I thought the the way we were playing and pushing up, it was just really limiting them in, in terms of what they were able to do. Yeah, and I think just to add to that as well, I think when you when you were looking at Borough yesterday and you're looking at our centre-halves, they weren't as overlapping as they have been in previous weeks. You know, they very much kept the shape. That also nullified the counter-attack, not just when Spurs got the ball, when obviously we had the shape there, but our ability to win the ball back very, very quickly to stop that th- one, that first three passes to get them on the counter and get them forward. And it just, when we were back into that shape and they had to start playing around, you know, and trying to get the, get the ball in behind us, that wasn't really their strengths at times. And I think we just completely nullified every attacking threat that they had. And of course, Spurs were always going to get chances. When you've got Harry Kane, you've got Kulovetsky and you've got Son and you've got the internationals within that team and the system that they play and the system that we play as well, it is it is aimed to create a lot more open space and to give you that passing option. And to be fair, we just nullified every single blade, every single pass, every bit of blade of grass and just everything last night was just brilliant. And I think Johnny House and like I was saying, and we said earlier in the season that under Neil Warnock that the system that Warnock was playing pretty much killed Johnny House. And, um, and I thought he was going to have to retire at the end of the season at some points because we just couldn't play that man-marking system. But I think when you've got the likes of Tav and you've got the likes of Crooks next year, you've got the real legs to try and get up and down the pitch and you've got the the ability to play with McNair and, and, and Dyke Steele. I think it protects him in terms of his weaknesses, but really highlights his strengths. And when he wins the ball, he's got that cover there. And honestly, I think yeah, I agree with you, Dana. 10 out of 10 performance from House last night. I thought it was absolutely brilliant. But I think it was 10 out of 10 from pretty much the lot of them because it's probably one of the best performances that I've seen um, in, in, in a long time. But they're only probably going to get better under Chris Wilder, which makes it even better. Um, but I spoke a little bit about shape there, Dana. And both teams did set up in similar shapes. But Tottenham switched um, the move to a 4 uh, at the back towards the end of the night, and it created a lot of space and made things re- well. It didn't really work, did it? No, panic stations, panic stations against the Borough. I mean, it it gave us space, and when Baller came on, I think that helped as well to have him back. I mean, brilliant to see Mark Baller and his and his smile because they are separate entities uh, back on the football pitch, and. It was the space that we had. You do not give us Aya John space. You really don't. And I think that gave us a, a little extra boost that we were getting these opportunities in the game. It was a, a lift in confidence because at points, genuinely, we were taking the piss in extra time. There was the, a, a move between Dyke Steel, Jones and Balogun where it was just lovely, intricate, tight football where Balogun flicked it. Um, back to to Jones. Jones threaded it through to to Dyke Steel. Crooks was the same with a, a few audacious flicks. And this is against a top six Premier League team. That's how good we were yesterday. We were expressing ourselves. And this is exactly what Chris Wilder brings to this this football club as a manager. Somebody that wants his team to play. It, it's not about kind of containing them and maybe hitting them on the counter attack. He wants them to play. And it's brilliant to see that that was what we were doing. As I said, I think it gave that little extra push when they moved to a back four. Tactically, it didn't work. And in fairness, I was really, I thought Spurs' tactics were were odd. They were, they were, it was like a mid block where they were just trying to hit Mm. us on the counter attack. And I'm thinking, you're Tottenham. Why are you doing this? But I'm not complaining. Um, Borough, whether or not Tottenham were good tactically or not, were, were just, I was going to swear there, but honestly, so, so good. Just, fantastic all throughout the game from first minute to 120th we deserve that victory so much and tom i'm gonna go and, and be a bit more impartial and have a look at spurs for real for a couple of a couple of minutes but were you actually surprised at how poor the works i know dana's mentioned it there about the mid block and at times it was very much a low block because yeah. you're trying to get as many bodies behind the ball and really try and nullify the boris threat and try and catch us on the counter attack which didn't work at times um but were you surprised at, like how poor they were because oh we were just simply that good i think it was both really i mean I, I was surprised at how poor they were um i did expect a bit more from spurs especially with the the recent form they've had you know beating city and so fair enough there was a loss to burnley in there as well but it did look like they were picking up 
Uh, but then they've, they've come to the, come to the Riverside and we've just outplayed them. And I think that just goes to show how good we are as well. Um, you know, like I said earlier, it, it does come down to the kind of mentality. I, I feel like that was was probably lacking against Bar- Barnsley. But last night, everyone knew what, what the job was, uh, executed it to a T. Um, and, and, you know, we, we didn't give Spurs a chance. Um, whereas, you know, I, th- I think they could have probably played a few other championship teams and, and played that same performance level and still beat them last night. Uh, but we didn't give them that, that chance to do that. Mm. And just before, obviously, we scored in the night, Ian, we dominated the play at times. Spurs did have the ball in the back of their net. They uh, offside, not offside. It was fairly tight, wasn't it? Don't care. <laughs> I Don't loved care. it. I, honestly, I, I think as soon as that happened, my eyes went straight towards the linesman. I saw he had his flag up. You, do, you saw Harry Kane doing his usual celebration and the, oh, literally the whole of the stadium just lifted. It was like they celebrated the kind of demise of that whole situation and it was brilliant. And yeah, I think it was just offside. Um, and to be fair, as I said, who cares? <laughs> we got a little bit of, I wouldn't say luck, because, you know, I, I think it was offside. But yeah, um, glad that was actually offside and that it didn't stand. To be fair, if you if you look at the freeze frame, I think VR would have given that as offside. So I think like his, his chin would have been offside or something yeah. like that. And... <laughs> a flick of his hair or something yeah. like that. I'm, I was really glad that we didn't have VR yesterday. I know they're not in um, non-Premier League stadiums, but I just feel like there would have been some... Um, fuckery. I can't think of another synonym, so I apologise for that. Um, that Housery <laughs> would have probably been the, the, How, the outhousery. Outhousery. Um, it's probably outhousery. Way, but let, let's talk about the Bora goal then, because Bora made a substitute. Andres Bora uh, was was tw- came off. Josh Corburn came on, and ultimately changed the game. Give Bora a, a different vocal point and a dynamic going forwards and. Obviously, Chris Wilder had an inspirational speech of just work your socks off, which just just worked to a treat. And the 19-year-old, 107 minutes gone, just finds his place in the box. Some really good link-up play uh, with Bor on that right-hand side, which I'll come up to in a second. But what a great, great strike, wasn't it, Dana? Unbelievable finish from him. And also, a nice pattern of Bora's play, which we're seeing quite a lot of at the moment. Yeah, that right-hand side. We're one of the most right-hand side dominant teams in the league. I think Luton are one. Obviously, we're coming up against them on Saturday who uh, work it down the right-hand side more than we do. But yeah, it was uh, honestly, Crooks makes such a big difference, doesn't he? When he floats into those half spaces and links up the play, Dyke Steele as well on the overlap. I think that was a part of the game where we were so confident and you could tell. Honestly, you could tell the... The goal itself comes through really good play. So glad Balogun didn't touch it, by the way, because he was offside. But yeah, he puts his foot straight through it, doesn't he? Doesn't he? He leathers it. And that's now four goals in six shots on target this season for Josh Corburn, I believe. So I, I said it on Twitter, I'll say it again. Josh Corburn is the best finisher at this club, and I think he showed it there. It was a fantastic finish. And honestly, like I said earlier, when that goal was scored, just... Honestly, the scenes, the, the the outpouring of emotion was... I nearly started crying. That's how intense it was. Uh, it was like the emotions were on a scale where I just couldn't deal with it. it, it so it was just like, what do I do? Oh, let's just cry. Um, I I almost did because um, it was just so... It was such a powerful moment, I think. Um, and that was coming. We absolutely deserved that goal. And welcome to the Dana Breakdown podcast. Um, we're just Dana <laughs> crying for 45 minutes. Um, Tom, talk to me about the goal then, because he's absolutely walloped that, if you want to quote Neil Madison. And this is just his face. Look how happy he was when he, that went in the back of the net. It was just sheer, sheer jubilation, wasn't it? It's just what the FA Cup's all about, isn't it? Just, uh, you know, 19 years old coming on and scoring the, scoring the winner against Spurs. Doesn't get much better than that for him. Like... I feel a bit like oh, what's the word? Um, You've like, underachieved in football, knowing that a nineteen-year-old went and scored against Spurs. <laughs> oh, I, I mean, I, I've definitely under, underachieved in football, but I, I missed out yesterday because I was in hospitality. So you know, where, where Dan is on about like going mental and stuff in the in the the stands, I, I couldn't really do that. Like from where I was sat, 
I mean, I had been suffering uh, from you know bout of hay fever since we went to Barnsley at the weekend, <laughs> resulting in a sore throat, which is making a bit of an appearance now, if you can tell. And I shouted after we scored last night and lost my voice completely. So, <laughs> but it, you know, it's it's all worth it just to kind of see that and uh, you know see us uh, knock Spurs out like that. It's like I said, just magic of the FA Cup, and. You tweeted it, really, it, Johnny, didn't you, about the, the, the crowd noise, the, the go on, and then the, the just mm. <laughs> synchronised just screams of yes. Like, it's honestly brilliant. A brilliant soundtrack to a really, really good moment for, for Josh Corbin. Like everyone, it's just so happy for him that he managed to leather that into the back of the net. I feel like it needs that tight it needs Titanic music at the in the background of it when he slays it in. Well, we couldn't make that happen, but the EFL would come and take that away, wouldn't they? If we get banned. Yeah, probably, <laughs> probably. But you know, if someone wants to make that for us and we'll share it, I mean, get <laughs> them banned. The, who, who wants to take the copy? Who wants to take the copyright uh, thing for it? But um, let's quickly chat about Josh Corbin then, because we we've got a lot of questions from him about about him, and and, and to be fair, we've got some from Josh <laughs> Chris, Chris, from him just asking about his own goal. <laughs> Hi guys, can you can you just review my goal, please? Um, how, how would I get into this space? Just want us to dissect it, but um, yeah, we've got a lot of questions from from uh, our from from people on Twitter and from Telegram, and, and they're saying that uh, Josh Corburn is your most clinical finisher. I mean, six, uh, I mean, four goals and six uh, six shots probably says clinical. Um, and should he start against Luton? And uh, I want to shout to, shout out to Josh and Chris and, and the others for, for sending those in. So you can both take it. One, um, should he start against Luton? And two, is he the most clinical striker we've got at the club? Tom, do you want to take the, the first part? Should he start against Luton? don't know. Um, Great answer. Yeah, I, I mean... You know he, he's Put done well. He, he's done head. well, kind of like with the uh, with the impact sub appearance last night. He did score against Luton earlier in the season. Um, you know, I, I think he's earned the chance if he gets it. Um, but then it, it it all kind of comes down to uh, to what Wilder wants to do against Luton, though, doesn't it? Like, um, you know, we, we could already have a system in place for that, and you know, a, a goal from, from the sub appearance might not change that. But, you know, I, I think there's definitely an argument there for him to start. Mm. And then uh, I'm assuming you're going to say, yes, he's the most clinical striker we've got. I think he is. I really do. I don't know what it is, but I just think that he's just got that natural knack of putting the ball in the back of the net. Um, and this is based on what we've seen of him in the in the senior team and little bits and bobs from, from the under-23s, which is, uh, of course, a kind of closed case of highlights so it's not the full thing so maybe I'm completely wrong with my assumptions but it does seem like he does have that natural ability to finish and that is gold dust really from from a striker and he looks like a really confident young player that is just I mean he he took his opportunity and he's been Mm. taking his opportunity ever since he came into the first team so in regards to the first question I think there's a case to be made for him starting because I think I think Spurs has been a little bit ineffective of late what mm. more I, I would like to see him start I think there's still a lot more to come from Balogun it was a real shame that he didn't score yesterday because it would have been brilliant for him you know as an arsenal only to score against Spurs and then Connolly had a knock didn't he I think he, uh, Chris Wilder said he, he failed a late fitness test so whether or not he's available for the weekend we'll see but I, I really wouldn't be mad at seeing Josh Coburn in the starting lineup against Luton I, I, I wouldn't be mad at it either to be honest I think he's he's very mobile he's, he uses his body well he gets in those positions and like you were saying then his, his ability to strike the ball um, and know where the back of the net is, is a real knack and be in that right position as well and I think his body I think for just on, on the goal it's whether he just quickly go back to it it's just the I think his body shape for when he receives the, when he receives the ball first and then when he gets on that turn it's very it's a very Split second turn, but it's very, very good. And he gets in behind, has the space, and he's able to get a strike away very, very quickly. And I think it's really good. I think he's re- very mature for his age in terms of centre forward play. And yeah, why not? Why not start him against Luton? What's What's the worst that can happen? You know, um, I think he's he's definitely earned his earned his place um, for Saturday. But let's we'll come back to the questions in a second because I want to quickly go into the present place um, fairly quickly and. Um, 
who gets your spot this week and why? Um, appreciate you. This could be anyone. This could be a fan. This could be a waiter. This could be the Borough chef. This could be anyone that you wanted. Um, but who gets the praise in place this week? Uh, Tom, who would you want to go <clears throat> first? I mean, everyone. Um, you know, that, that whole squad last night was absolutely superb. Um, you know, there are a few highlights in it. But, um, you know, Johnny Housen was was by far man of the match. Uh Paddy McNair for, you know, when we've broken down the, the goals from the last couple of weekends and, you know, he has been at fault for them. Didn't see a trace of that last night. I thought he was absolutely superb as well. And also uh, Joe Lumley. And, you know, he's had his fair, sh- uh, fair share of stick the probably the last few weeks. And, you know, some of it might have been warranted from you know, some of the mistakes he's made and stuff like that. But last night, some of the saves he was making, like split second reaction saves, absolutely superb. Um, and he just didn't show any any kind of traces of of not being confident or, you know, th- those mistakes in the last few weeks affecting him at all. Uh, just thought he was brilliant. Yeah, it wasn't a Joel only performance. He didn't give you a small heart attack moment when Docker he took the ball around him and absolutely skied in the north stand. But apart apart from that, I I think Joel Lumley was, was super. But Dana, who's who's who gets your place this week? Yeah, every single player on that pitch. I, I echo Tom Tom's sentiment there. But I will highlight the back three. Um, obviously Housen as well. But the back three, there was two tackles made in that game that I celebrated as if it was a goal for Borough. It was McNair's on Bergvine and then Fry's on Kulovsky two unbelievable last-ditch tackles that I think really epitomised Borough's fighting spirit yesterday and Dykesdale as well. <laughs> I mean, what can you say about Anthony Dykesdale? I think of late, he's maybe been a little bit shaky defensively, but there was no signs of that yesterday whatsoever. The typical, what we'd expect of Dykesdale, cool, calm, composed, not overawed by the occasion, really thriving off, I guess, the energy of the crowd and, and the occasion of the game itself. He was brilliant. Every time that he had to move out in a kind of, uh, as he was tracking his man, he did that with aplomb. He was brilliant in the attacking phases of the game as well. He was just, the back three was superb. Again, I think we have to give Joel Lomney credit because there were two saves that he made, one from Crooks from a corner where it came off crooks and again what Tom said the, the sort of last minute reaction save and then one from Son as well where he flicked it I was thinking for both of those they're in and not for uh, not without Joel Lumley so yeah it was it was a really good performance for Joel Lumley and also the fans as well because I thought that atmosphere was unbelievable really good from the first minute to the last minute and I don't usually comment on away fans but Spurs fans were horrible yesterday they were so quiet and I think it was because they were just silenced by the Borough performance and by the Borough fans and seeing the players embrace the all wilder said chant at the end I mean I was recording it on my phone and I panned over to the the players and they were obviously clapping along with it that was so that was a really really special moment to see all that happening it shows that real togetherness between the the players and the fans, and that goes a lot. It goes a long way, and I think, you know, you can definitely see that fans are definitely bought in. It's not just Wilder's doing, but what the players are doing on the pitch as well. I think that's massive, um, and it'd be massive when we got Wembley, and win the FA Cup, and the playoff final this season. Um, but in terms of my praise and place nominations. I think Dyke Steel definitely. I think you could definitely create a rom com about Dyke Steel called There's Something About Dyke Steel because he's just he just well, we, he's just fantastic. We already have a song for him, don't we? <laughs> yeah, you're Dyke Steel, I'd do anything for you. And I would, to be honest, he's just brilliant. What a player. Um yeah, the, the back line was great. Tav was out of this world. Um you know, he, he's definitely a Premier League player in the making. I think de- and someone who's definitely going to be in the Premier League, not just probably next season, uh, if, if it's with Borough or not. I think Dale Fry, brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Such a mature performance. And, you know, the way he's pocketed, not just Harry Kane and Ronaldo, the last couple of games, shows a real level of maturity with his game. He's a completely different player um, than what we've seen a couple of years ago. And I think, you know, when people say, oh, we'll get some money for Jed Spence, we'll get some money for uh, for Dale Fry as well, because people are after centre-halves at the moment, and he's a very good one. Um, and, yeah, if, if we if we don't go up next season, if we don't go up this season, I'll tell you what, we struggle to keep hold of him probably uh, in, in the summer. Um, but in terms of my, my official nominations for the week, 
I think Tav is definitely up there. And then, of course, Captain Johnny Housen. What a, what a performance. They like, rolled back the years. And I've, I, I take back every every negative thing I've said about Housen. One of them was in the lab, last podcast as well, saying he's finished at like a right centre attack in midfield. But, I mean, <laughs> CDM, it's his position. He's fantastic. And then also, a notable mention for Josh Corburn. His face, when he scored, so heartwarming. And probably a moment he'll never forget. He probably didn't sleep last night. He's probably definitely that like Chris Hughes meme where he's he's laying a bit just like wide awake. Oh <laughs> um, yeah. I think a lot of Bora fans are like that last night as well, just staring at the ceiling again. I mean I was. I, I feel like it's getting to a regular occurrence now that I'm just laid in bed staring at the ceiling, processing just how bloody good we are. It, it's nice to have a good football team at times, isn't it? But like we've said previously on this podcast that this Borough team, it's a project and they can win five in a row. They'll probably, they can lose five, they can, they can win five in a row, they can lose five in a row. But you can definitely see there's, there's steps, there's steps being made going forward and, and for the future. And it's really exciting. But let's go back to the questions then, because the, the question which we we're going to talk about Johnny Housen is from Borough and that, and he says, Johnny Housen should never be allowed to change his position again. Agree. Uh, Tom, should he be able to change? No, I think just keep him there. I think that is that is the ideal uh, position for him in this system. So no need to uh, to change him around anywhere. Easy, that one. I mean, if he's going to move, probably centre-half, I think. Um, but in terms of the next one, it's from Danny Beardmore. And he says, can we use this to spur uh, us on in the league? Um, again. <laughs> Did you do that on purpose? He has, yes. Um, I've nice really made an emphasis funny. on the spur there. Um, <laughs> just in case you didn't notice. Um, <laughs> well, we, we said this in the last podcast, this could either be a... The, the result on Saturday could be a help or hindrance in Borough's season. But Dana, can this spur us on in the league once again to get our form right and to get some more points on the board? Oh, 100%. I really think it can. It's, those, it's these types of results that really pin a team together in their togetherness and just team spirit and that is a big part of a playoff battle you need to have that togetherness and we've seen it like we you know we saw it under Karanka Chris Wilder has seen it with his sides at Northampton and at Sheffield United it's so pivotal and those types of performances and those types of results definitely help towards I guess culminating into an atmosphere of just pride you know pride between the fans and, and the players and vice versa and I think it really can I really do and it is a big game for us on Saturday as well off the back of obviously in the league a disappointing defeat against Barnsley my family are coming coming up so I'm hoping that they are not a, an unlucky curse uh, for that game and I'm hoping that it can be a, a similar atmosphere although it won't be full house I'm hoping it could be a similar atmosphere a similar performance and a similar result. Okay, and then obviously Neil Taylor um, was on talk spot this morning. He said he we think he thinks we can go into every game and win, um, which is really good mentality. And also, there's some really good snippets from that chat with talk spot where it includes Tayosi Alasanya's nickname being Milk and Two Sugars because he's called <laughs> T, uh, which is great banter. Um, but we'll go, if if Bora were to win. Uh, every game uh, for the remainder of the season. They would definitely be in the FA Cup final and then a playoff final as well. Um, and Tom Waldowney asks us, what would we rather take, um, a guaranteed spot in the FA Cup final or the playoff final? Tom, what would you prefer? You know, it's a, it's a difficult one, this one, but I'm going to say a guaranteed spot in the FA Cup final just purely, purely because, I mean, I, I think we can make the playoffs anyway, so I don't think we need to take a guaranteed spot. But also... Even if we lose in the playoffs, we get a full season of this next next year, and you know, like uh, it, I, I imagine it, it, it would be like the promotion season under Karanka, where like you go into every game expecting to win it, and then the togetherness is there and stuff. Having a guaranteed spot in the FA Cup final, like what a moment that would be! Hopefully, we'd be able to mm. put uh, put an end to the Wembley curse by beating Boreham Wood in the final. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> but um, yeah, it, it would just be it, it'd be great occasion and you know it, it's the stuff you you'd kind of like dream of of, of being in, in in football probably as a as a fan and a player okay so you're gonna go FA Cup final um against Boreham Wood which we'll win 3-0 um Dana what are you gonna go for well I've seen us in a playoff final so 
and I haven't seen us in an FA Cup final, so I'd have to go for the FA Cup final. And, and good thinking there, Tom, with the whole um, he thinks that we're going to get in the playoffs anyway. So uh, <laughs> very good answer there, I think. Yeah, I'll go FA Cup final as well. Um, but yeah, in terms of the FA Cup, then Borough are in the quarterfinals, of course, and the draw is on Thursday uh, at seven forty-five. Um, but who do we want in the next round? Um, who, or who do you think we'll get in the next round? Um, Dana, who do you want? Newcastle, Sunderland. <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> I feel like you. I feel like because if you're listening to that, you no one's you seen that see wink it. there. Like, <laughs> I just realised that after I did it, we will just put that little ding in that like is usually accompanied by a wink. But yeah, um, I don't know who's in it. Who's still in it? Uh, well, obviously, there Man City is Manchester City, City Liv- Manchester City, Liverpool, Palace, Everton, Borough, Chelsea, Forest, Southampton, West Ham, Barham Wood. Um, and I'm kind of I'm, I'm missing people here. Uh, Forest play Huddersfield, um, oh, yeah. and Chelsea yeah, play yeah. Luton, um, and Liverpool Ooh. play Norwich. I don't know what I would want from that, but I can st- I could definitely see us draw- getting drawn against Crystal Palace at Palace. Um, I don't know why I could just see that happening. Maybe it's because they want to like you know graffiti on the team bus again thinking that it's the borough one when really it's their own <laughs> um but in terms of what i want oh god i don't know to be honest um let's take on pep why not take on pep um did i crash there a little bit but it's fine a little bit yeah, you're good oh. uh, let's let's have pep let's have man city um and let's beat them Okay, we'll have Pep, but you think we'll get Crystal Palace. Uh, Tom, who would you want? I, I know I said I want them in the final, but I want whoever wins out of Everton and Boreham Wood. Um, <laughs> purely because I think if Everton win, I think we can beat them. Um, and, you know, one of the, the first FA Cup runs I can remember, we beat Everton at the Riverside. Um, I think it was Nemeth that scored that day, but that was when we got through the semi final in 2002. So. Yeah, I quite, quite fancy the winners of that one. Um, maybe Palace at home as well. Okay, yeah, um, I, I, I have a feeling we get Palace or something, but I would, I would like Liverpool. I think Liverpool at home would be a nice, would be a nice game. I think the last time, last time Liverpool were here, they absolutely spanked us, and <laughs> I feel like that's one a bit of revenge, revenge, revenge on a, on a Jurgen Klopp. But guys, that's it. Thank you very much for joining me as always and thank you very much for listening uh for listening as well and bora avoid defeat uh, avoid defeat and, and a banana skin in the fa cup um we're going to the quarter finals after beating spurs and we're one game away from wembley eight wins in a row at home it's a funny old game isn't it this is the Bora breakdown podcast and that was our Bora match day chatter in a pod up the Bora breakdown